Hey there, buds. I'm coming at you now with a penetrating shot rogue build. This is what I've migrated into after having been flurry for quite a while there. Uh, I definitely think preferentially I enjoy flurry as a playstyle more. It's more akin to my WoW days. However, I wanted to give this a go and see what all the fuss was about for penetrating shot, and here we are. Uh, so with this build, the whole objective of it is building up your combo points building up your core skill damage, your precision stacks, and then releasing that with your penetrating shot. And while you're doing that, you're building up vulnerability on targets and getting slows on them, and that's gonna further increase that damage. So going through the legendaries, damaging an elite enemy grants you a barrier. Evading through an enemy infected by shadow imbuement grants stealth for 4 seconds. Breaking stealth with an attack grants you life on kill for 4 seconds. Basic skills gain attack speed. Basic skills grant damage reduction. The unique, which leaves a frost trail behind you. Attacking enemies with basic skills increases the damage of your next core skill. Whenever penetrating shot damages an enemy, two additional arrows split off to either side. When you break stealth with an attack, you drop a cluster of exploding stun grenades around your location that deal damage and stun enemies. Imbuement skills have increased potency against vulnerable enemies. Marksman skills have a chance to create an arrow storm at the location. And finally, dealing increased damage while you have a barrier active. The sub out over here would likely be for the arrows and you would be wanting to use condemnation because that just stacks better however i don't have the ancestral version of this right now and there also is you know discussions on whether or not grasp of shadow is something that could be pushed into the build uh, maybe in place of your gloves here to get rid of the attack speed put that on something else um, and just have that extra clone firing off penetrating arrows which is gonna be kind of nice the variations that I've put on here from what a lot of folks are using is I'm using this here for evading through shadow imbuement. If I get in a pinch in a corner, I like to have that oh shit button. And by putting that there and then dodging, you're going to get stealth, which lets you just run away from the mobs. And then as you come out of stealth, you're going to get lifesteal. So if you're at low health, that also is a, a way to kind of save some health at that point. And then because I'm using that, I'm also using this, which is going to just drop some grenades to do a bit of damage, as well as stun them if they were at the edge of where I was comfortable getting away from. It just buys me a bit more time and lets me start to kite again if I kind of got off track. Um, combined with that, you're leaving a frost trail behind you, which slows things. So the whole name of the game with all that is kiting, kiting, kiting. And then as you're building up damage, you're getting your barrier, increasing your damage again, your building up your combo points, you're building up your basic attacks, your precision stacks, and then you're releasing that with an imbued arrow off. Typically, I like to get the poison going first into the crowds, getting them ticking, getting damage going, and then I'll try and finish off with the vulnerability slash shadow imbuement explosions that you'll proc off those arrows. Um, again, this here is really just a oh shit button. It isn't something that you have to use frequently so maybe it can be subbed out it's just something that's a personal flair and taste that i've been enjoying using i like stealth with rogues it's kind of part and parcel of what the class fantasy is to me um, and then yeah going over skills i run dash a lot of people use caltrops uh, you can go either way with this any of the mobility and agility skills are great i just like dash to get out of a pinch and because we're slowing so many things in crowd controlling it comes up fairly frequently to always have it off cooldown uh, you have to run Dark Shroud once you get to World Tier 4, basically. It's just super necessary to keep you alive and, and give you a bit of a boost of, of that uh, damage which you could take, as well as it's giving you that nice movement speed. Uh, a lot of builds are going to also use Forceful Arrow, which is probably a more traditional marksman build. However, for me, as a melee player, typically, I like Puncture again here. Uh, I like the fanning of the knives, the slow. It applies vulnerability well, so it's just really good. You just have to kite a little more, play it a little looser, and 
at the edge of things. Maybe you're a little more glass cannon because you're not as safe with the, the shots from range, but it's still, it's something that I think is a more blended hybrid approach to this build. In terms of our specialization, obviously we are running combo points. You do this just because it's gonna enhance the damage as you're stacking all these other things up to enhance your damage of your core shot. It's all about the nukes and your penetrating shots need to be built up to that point. In terms of our Paragon tree here, the big things to, to look for is our combat, exploit, and I'll be going in fusion over here. Um, the way this tree kind of goes right now, there's so many variations you could do. Uh, this is just currently what I'm running. And yeah, you can make your decision as to how you want to do that. I'm not going too much into it because right now it's not really known what the best paths will be optimally. People are making guesswork. They're picking out their own builds and paths to take. So you could do the same. You could look online and, and kind of calculate how you want to go through the path if so choose. In terms of our skills here, uh, puncture, as I said, fundamental puncture for the three th throw, which is going to help us with slowing and help us with vulnerability. Sturdy for damage mitigation. We're obviously using penetrating shot and we're going the route here where it's going to slow and knock down elites. That just helps us with spacing and kiting better. Weapon mastery, flat damage. It's great. I love it. I'm using dash, as I said, and we're going the route down here, which is going to help us get cool down off that. I exploit for extra damage on healthy or injured enemies, so pretty much always. Malice for extra damage to vulnerable, which we're making everybody vulnerable. Dark Shroud here, as I said, necessary, and you want that movement speed increase, it's really nice. Precision Imbuement, increasing our crit strike chance when we're using imbued skills, which we are constantly doing and rotating through. Shadow Imbuement here, going up the path where we're going to get vulnerability explosions. And because of that, we want to be taking Consuming Shadows, which I like to put three stack in because it gives you more energy back as you're hitting mobs. Poison Imbuement is super jacked up. It does a lot of damage. It's the bread and butter for the actual damage. This is more the finisher or the oh shit button. And because of that, we're going to be going the route here for 30% chance to double apply. Deadly Venom increases our damage. Debilitating Toxins is going to be more mitigation again. Everything should be poison, so we will always have that up. Adrenaline Rush is just as you're kiting, you're going to be getting more energy back. And then Haste is kind of helping with that. It's a nice marriage of the two because it's giving you more movement speed to continually do that. And if you're below the energy, then you'll get more attack speed, which helps you further throw punctures out and get things going a little faster for your energy regen. And then finally, we're closing off with Precision, which, as I mentioned, helps the build as well because it's just a further thing that stacks with the overall theme of stack, 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 dump. Another soul. 